Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move and for today's episode we are back with a new series of uh, the La Liga teams and we're trying to give as much uh, tactical advice as a team and player advice uh, as well as tactics of course so basically going to be trying to cover as many of these uh, tabs as we can some uh, more in depth than others of, others, of course uh, depending on the, their importance but generally speaking tactics are our main focus and how to build a squad as well from the Statico Bilbao uh, so they are of course a very interesting team currently in the Europa League they've uh, got a huge reputation uh, uh, and uh, they're of course one of the top teams in uh, the La Liga competition. So um, another thing that makes them very interesting is of course that you can help them to their first uh, La Liga title since, let's have a look here, 1984. So that's uh, another reason why to play with them. Uh, but another thing is actually that they have um, a transfer policy that set that Atletico Bilbao are not allowed to sign non-Basque players. This makes it very interesting because of course you have to have a very local team uh, and so uh, you know you have to test your um, squad building abilities by sticking to a very small pool of players of course regens helps but at the moment you know you have to rely on the current players available uh, but in general of course facilities are really good and all that sort of business you can have a look at that yourself uh, but we can go ahead and have a look at the squad itself so um, generally, one of the first things I like to do when, I'm, when I join a squad is obviously uh, go through each player individually and try and figure out who are the top players in our squad and try and you know force them all into the same uh, starting eleven. That way, you're using as many of your best players as possible all the time. Uh, of course, another thing to do is actually um, you know uh, have a look at your staff and see. Well, obviously you want to completely rebuild the staff whenever possible but you also do want to have, have a look at which staff member you can trust so just sorting about by judgment of ability my assistant manager has a very decent uh, you know judgment of ability and potential so you can rely on him uh, but uh, Adoni uh, Imaz the coach has a little bit better in terms of his uh, attributes uh, and so you can kind of just alternate between the two make sure that they're matching each other in terms of their judgment uh, of the players and if so then that means you can safely assume that their judgment is correct uh, but yeah another thing to do a nice little trick is to go onto team report uh, you can obviously have a look at your strengths and weaknesses and trying to work out you know uh, what's what and how to you know play to your strengths and how to cover up your weaknesses uh, but at the same time you can go to squad depth uh, go on all current ability and all positions uh, normally it'll have a set formation for you uh, of, which is your assistant manager's recommendation, I think, uh, which my assistant thinks a 4411 is a, you know, is the shout, there's the formation that we should go for. Uh, but just go on all positions, don't pick ne any necessary formation and just try and figure out where your best players play and uh, what positions to put them in and of course their roles. Uh, so I've gone and put the opinion of the coach that we mentioned earlier, but you can definitely put the assistant manager. I didn't feel like there's too much difference, so I'm just going to uh, keep it on Odoni here. And uh, you can have easily a quick look, so you can see that uh, Aritz Aduriz is our best striker and possibly our only good striker. Our, the backups there aren't necessarily good enough to make me consider playing a two-man uh, striker partnership. Uh, so you can consider that means that we should play a one striker uh, formation. Also got Ike Munayin who can play as left winger and uh, who's the best attacking midfielder left and the uh, best midfielder left as well. But you can see clearly that he enjoys playing on the uh, higher position better. You also got two options on the right, uh, both players capable of playing in the deeper position as well, Enaki Williams and Markel Suesta. Uh, but they both again play better in their attacking right midfield spot. So you can assume that we are playing with two wingers and a striker so far. Also got Garcia in attacking midfield, that's supposed to be his best position as well. So there you go, we've got our front four made up. The question is now, do we play with uh, two defensive midfielders, two central midfielders, uh, do we play with wing backs uh, or full backs, what do we do exactly? 
So, uh, looks by the looks of it, we can play two central midfielders or two defensive midfielders quite comfortably. Uh, but I believe Mikael San Jose here is best as a centre back, which is where we need him most. Uh, you can play him very comfortably, you can play in defensive midfield as well, but his best position is probably centre defence or it's the position that we need him most in because Laporte is the first choice centre back and uh, Mikael San Jose is the second choice so you don't really want to rely on Chabi and Uri here who are decent players but it's clear to see that um, uh, Laporte and San Jose are better and we're back sorry about that a bit of a technical issue um, but yeah, so I think we're talking about defence. Uh, so Mikel has San Jose, we can assume uh, we want him to play in the centre defence because that's where we need him a bit more with Laporte. And at the same time, uh, we do have sufficient central midfielders in uh, Benat and Ander uh, Iteraspe, <laughs> if that's the right way to say it. Um, so yeah. Uh, it makes more sense to keep Mikel, so it means we're playing with two centre-backs, we don't really want to play with three, which kind of negates the need for uh, playing wing-backs. And at the same time, our wing-backs uh, can very comfortably, comfortably play as uh, full-backs. So if we assume uh, that we're playing a four-man back line, that we only really leaves us with our central midfield, which leaves us the question, do we want to play with two DMs or two central midfielders? Now, since we are one of the better quality team um, player uh, no tween team sorry since we are the better quality teams in the division uh, we're expected to get Europa League football I think if we have a look at the season preview from the board as well as the season you know our prediction it's been sixth place which is Europa League football and uh, so we can assume we're better than more than half the table at least so uh, that means uh, I think we can play with a bit of a more attacking formation we already are with the front four uh, and so it kind of makes sense that we can play uh, with a, why is that not working? Um, with uh, with two centimeters instead of two DMs, we don't have to risk that completely. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, it's really up to you guys. You can play them in either position. I'll show you just what I've done in my own tactics itself. Uh, but you can very comfortably play. You know, two central midfielders. I don't think you can necessarily play two DMs because it's only a Itersepe that you can play with. So what we've gone with is actually playing one DM and one central midfielder just to protect ourselves a little bit more. Because when, of course, you do play two central midfielders, you, you expose the space in behind uh, that attacking midfielder, opposition attacking midfielders can take advantage of. Uh, so bearing in mind we're playing a 4-2-3-1, a symmetric formation, you know, playing one DM, one center midfielder. Uh, then we can start to really have a look at our squad uh, squad players individually and see whether we need uh, and you know whether we where areas that we can invest in or uh, players that are you know that we want to pick as our first teams even though we generate first team option even though we generally went through it here uh, and at the same time just have a look at some other things so one of the other things I like to do is actually go at the under 19s and have a look uh, Spain of course has the Atletico Bilbao B or C uh, most teams have that in the La Liga so you just have to keep that in mind too it's not like the under 23s or under 18s uh, but I just want to see if there's anyone ready for first team football so as you can see clearly uh, one of our best youth players aren't even ready so you can assume the rest of them aren't and what I mean by ready is that they have to be La Liga um, ability at least uh, and so here as you can see his current ability is second division B uh, we can also have a look at the technical B go on to reports uh, no one necessarily there's Unai Lopez but he's been sent out on loan Inigo here is second division B as well so we can assume that everyone else isn't uh, of La Liga level and uh, you know there's not too much hope in the C version of our club but um, you can have a quick look as well but generally no one there so that no that puts us in a good position to know everyone that is who's supposed to be in our squad is currently and there's no one who's you know out of uh, uh, in under 19s or B or C teams and uh, they should be in our actual squad uh, so keeping that in mind we can actually you know now we have a formation now we know we have all the formation the team uh, the players that we need we can actually start to get rid of some of these lone players. I'm just going to temporarily move them to the under-19 squad. But you can also obviously do the filter thing, which is to just hide any players who are out on loan. That's an option as well. As you can see, some players here are already listed and loaned by, I guess, the previous manager. Uh, and you're obviously some of your players are wanted too. But anyways, let's go through each one individually. So we've got two goalkeepers here, Kepa and Iago. And if you just have a quick look, Kepa, the 22-year-old uh, youngster, is 
definitely your first choice goalkeeper according to Adoni. Uh, he's better than Iago. He's a good player for most first division sides. You, you should be aiming for leading uh, at this point. You know, you want to break through into being one of the top teams in the division. But having a good player from most uh, first division sides is a very decent thing to have, especially because also he can become a leading first division goalkeeper. So uh, that keeps, you know, you're safe in terms of having the number of goalkeepers you want. But whether you need improvement in the department, is another question and it seems like he definitely needed that his backup Iago Herrerin is a leading player for most second division side so you can definitely improve in that front uh, and this is a bit of an area where you want to consider should I be completely ruthless or should I keep the faith in Kepa so you have an option here basically you can bring in a top leading goalkeeper for the first division and sell Iago or you can keep Kepa as a first choice and uh, bring in a youngster with potential in terms of a goalkeeper and sell off Iago as well but definitely Iago is not of quality to be in your squad. Now in terms of right backs it looks like you've got three according to the assistance report but if you have to lo look at them individually just to make sure they are all right backs by the looks of it that's the case. Oscar's a right back and an attacking midfielder that's a hell of a combination. Um, and Inigo here, and there you go. So they all are right backs, which means you've got too many. So you should definitely be selling one. I like to have a basic squad built. I mean, if you watch my Let's Play modes and all the other team tactics, generally I like to have a squad of 20, 22 players, a first 11 of leading players, top quality players, star or world class, uh, and then a backup 11 of youngsters with potential. I feel like that's the best balance to have in your squad so no one's complaining about game time. At the same time, you're developing your own players and you've got a, fir a first team starting 11 who are ready to absolutely destroy the competition. Uh, but bearing in mind, it looks like Oscar is our best right back. He's a good player for most first division sides. Since we're a Europa League quality team, that generally should mean that we have uh, a bunch of good player first division side players and a bunch of uh, and, and some sprinkled in leading players or probably even some star players for the division so um, you have to keep in mind that this is a division that has the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi in the, in the division so uh, it's going to be a bit difficult to break into that leading player barrier as well but yeah Oscar is definitely our first choice that leaves us with both uh, Inigo and Eneko here uh, and if as you can tell Eneko is the one who's been currently um, Listed, he's a decent player for most play uh, for most first division sides. Inigo's apparently a worse off player. Uh, bear in mind, Inigo's uh, susceptible to injuries, so you don't really want you want to avoid as much as possible players who are susceptible to injuries. He can definitely suit our position. Uh, generally, his uh, you know his attributes here are quite good. He's a resolute personality as well, so it's a positive personality to have in your squad. Unfortunately, he's not capped. Um, also, you have to bear in mind, of course, whenever you make investment, all your players have to be basket players. So just keep that in mind. Do not sell Iago and then go like, OK, I need to find a goalkeeper and then you can't find one. Uh, generally, I always recommend never to sell your players off first, invest and then sell off the ones that you don't need anymore. Just like how here you've got excess numbers. So buy and then when you've got excess numbers, sell off the players that are worse. Uh, but anyways, you've also got Inigo here who's also listed. Uh, he's probably considered a decent player. He's got a hint of potential, but he's 24 years of age, so it might be unlikely that he reaches it. He's also susceptible to injuries. So again, you have a, a bit of a dilemma, which is, uh, you know, whether to be ruthless or whether to be nice. So Oscar is your first choice, a good player for most first division sides. You can definitely go out and buy, buy uh, well, obviously first sell one of these players and then go out and buy uh, a leading right back uh, and then obviously have Oscar as your backup or you can just bring in a youngster with potential and set off both Eneko and Inigo. Both of them are only decent players, uh, unlikely to fulfill their potential of becoming good players for most uh, first division sides uh, and at the same time uh, you'd be better off with the uh, players who aren't susceptible to injuries. I think if you asked me if you had to sell just the one and couldn't bring anyone in, uh, you do have a bit of a choice to make. And Echo's been at Atletico for a while and so has Enigo, I think. So you should be able to sell either one of them. Uh, and they're, you know, they earn just about the same amount. But if you ask me, better off selling Enigo, keeping Enigo instead. And uh, that way, just to give him a hint of faith, maybe he can fulfill his potential of being a good player for most uh, first division sides. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, it's definitely an area to consider. Bear in mind, fullback positions are kind of the ex exceptions to the rule that I just mentioned, which is having balance in your squad, uh, because it's really difficult to find fullbacks who are leading players in the division. So just keep that in mind. If you do find them, they're likely to be 40 mil plus, uh, and that's probably money that we don't have. In the central defence though, We've got excess numbers once more. We've got five players when you only really need four. Uh, Yurai is unavailable until the 1st of October for medical reasons anyways. Uh, but if we have a look at, you know, who's our top options and who isn't, uh, we mentioned already Laporte and Mikel San Jose are going to be our first choice options. Laporte is a good player for most first division sides and he has potential to be leading, so that's nice. Uh, Mikel San Jose is also a good player for most first divisions. Uh, the backups Unai is not even ready for first division football. Yurai is... A decent player and can become good and Chabi is just a decent player so if you ask me who to move on uh, it's probably Unai you need to not move him on because he has potential but you can definitely uh, you know uh, move into the second division team or something like that so that he can, or even loan him out so that he gets a decent amount of football and becomes a better player for you so if you can assume that's your four right there uh, this is again another place that you can be a bit ruthless you are uh, like we mentioned, a team who's going to have a lot of good first division size uh, players. So if you want to break into that top bracket of quality and really take over Madrid's, uh, the both both Madrid's and uh, Barcelona, then you need to start investing in leading players. So this is how you break the barrier. And this is why it's so tough to go from a mid-table team into a top team. Um, and so you do have to be ruthless sometimes. Laporte is definitely someone that you don't want to move on. Um, he. You have to also bear in mind the type of football these players are expecting. So Laporte is on huge wages. He's expecting to be a key player. San Jose is a first team player as well. So it's unlikely to go down well with them if you were to move them on. Um, but Yure and Chabi, I think they would be more a bit more understanding. Chabi in particular, you do want to uh, you know bring in a better youngster with potential because he's just a decent player. He's not going to go. He's not going to improve. Uh, so it's better to replace him and then sell him off, of course. He's worth a decent amount of money, I think. 3.3 .3 million is not bad. Uh, Yurai, though, has a bunch of potential, so you could just uh, ha you know, have some faith in him. Um, but again, it's always a question of whether you want to be ruthless or whether you want to show some faith in your players. Left-backs, we've got both Mikel and Enric here. Mikel is supposed to be our first choice, but he's only a decent player for most first division sides, so he does fall short of that quality in our starting level of players. Uh, so your better option is probably to invest in a good left-back for most Premier, uh, first division sides, or if you obviously can find one, then a leading one. But you do have a question of uh, quality again in the left back spot, which is Enrique, uh, or Enrique, sorry. Uh, with, he's a just considered a good player for most second division size, so you do want to improve on that and bring in a youngster with potential. Um, obviously, if you ask me what to do here, my suggestion is uh, bring in a good or leading left back. And then just sell off Enrique and have Mikel as backup until you can bring in a youngster with potential. But of course, as always, bear in mind, you're only allowed Basque players. So make sure you have your scouting system in place. And when you find that leading player that you can actually buy, then you can start to consider moving on your players. But like I always say, buy first, then sell. You can't afford to lose your numbers and then uh, find yourself unable to sign anyone but so far we're talking about goalkeeping up to about uh, and the defense as well you've got your numbers so that's more important than anything you've got the amount of players that you need it's just a question of quality and a lot of squads uh, are sometimes missing numbers itself let alone quality so it's good to see so far that we've got that uh, the rest of the squad here should be about 11 players we've got 12 here that means we've got an excess um, we've got the two central midfielders, uh, the, the front four as well. That means you should you need ten actually, I think as well, not even uh, eleven. So uh, we do have an excess, but that's a different issue entirely. Let's have a look at the players. So we mentioned uh, Ander here is supposed to be our starting eleven player. He is a good player for most first division sides. Again, so far we haven't had a leading one, which is a bit of a concern. Uh, he's susceptible, susceptible to injuries as well, so you do want to keep out an eye out on his match time and whatnot, but he's definitely good enough for the squad. Uh, you've got the likes of Benat as well that we mentioned. He's also a good player for most first division sides, but again, he suffers with injury problems too. So in terms of their backups, if we just take off 
Ander and Benat here. Uh, you do have options in Mikel as well as, well, both Mikels basically. So uh, over here, we've got a leading player for most second division size. That's not good enough. Mikel is a decent player, so that's okay for us, but we do want better improvements and you could possibly do better with two youngsters uh, who, with potential who can eventually overtake Ander and Benat as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Your backups in central midfield aren't good at all. Uh, in terms of the right wing position, you're very much suit is sorted out with Markle and Inaki. Uh, their ability, though, is both good players for most first division size. Inaki, though, can be a leading player, so he is going to be our first choice. And you have the backup, Markel, who's a very capable backup. And he's actually going to be a little bit unhappy with his match time. Um, not so much because he's, uh, he's accepted the rotational, you know, role. Uh, I haven't set this, this is how it's been set already. Um, but it's likely because of his ability he's going to start to be a bit concerned. But if he's very comfortable with that backup role, hold on to him for as much as you can. Uh, so that's our right wing position, arguably the strongest position in terms of depth out of our squad. Uh, in the attacking midfield, we've got Raul Garcia, who we mentioned is going to be our first choice. He's a good player for most Premier League sides. And we've also got the backup, Agar, here, who's a leading player for most second division. So again, another area that you would do better off with uh, a youngster with potential can overtake Raul. Of course, the, like I always mention, the more ruthless method is to buy a better attacking midfielder than Raul, a leading one, and then just having Raul as backup and selling off Agar here. Left wing, you've got Ikar Munayin and Sabin uh, Moreno. Uh, Ikar, of course, our first choice option. He could possibly improve into a leading player for most first division sides. Um, you know, he's previously in FM, always been a top talent, but uh, he's started to run out of time to fulfill his potential, I suppose. But you can definitely trust him. He is our first choice anyways. So in terms of our backup here, uh, Sabin is a leading second division side. So again, not good enough. And he's unlikely to improve. He's set built to injuries. He doesn't enjoy big matches. There's a lot of problems there. And you definitely want a better uh, backup for Ikar Muniyin, a youngster with potential who can overtake Ikar. Or again, the other alternative is to invest in a top winger and then have Ikar Muniyin as a backup. Uh, Aritz Adurez is our, your first choice striker, good player for most first division sides. The fans really love him. He's susceptible to injuries though. And he's of course very old as well, which is a huge problem. Um, but so for this season at least he is our first choice and he is our top talent he's been at Atletico uh, Bilbao for a while he came from our academy went off to Mallorca and Valencia for a little bit but he came back eventually and that's all that matters I suppose um, but yeah I mean he is our first choice his backup's definitely not good enough which is why he's listed he's a second division player and if you have a backup young so potential that's perfect because uh, Aduriz is at the end of his career anyways and so you want that changing of the guard but again as always, you can always be ruthless, invest in a top player, make him your backup, and that's it. But there you go. Uh, so far, no real areas of concern because uh, you do have the numbers. The question is just about backup uh, and the squad depth. I think that's even mentioned in the team report. Lack of quality depth, that's the goalkeeper one, but it also mentions overall depth as well. So it's just you want to improve on that to make sure that you solidify your spot as a Europa League team. And at the same time, you also need that depth to step up and go into the next spot, which is Champions League football, and then of course start to aim for the title. So anyways, that's our squad sorted out. Uh, we can eventually finally move to tactics. We mentioned the formation. We're playing a 4-2-3-1, that's asymmetric. Uh, let me just mention the type of football we're trying to play. We want to play direct football uh, and uh, just really attacking football at the same time. So we've got the mentality set on control. Uh, I think you can definitely play with attacking as well. You can alternate between the two according to the match itself. Sometimes going on attacking and you're facing a smaller team, they'll be counter-attacking you, so it'll be a bit of a worry. So you can just stay on control, which like it mentions in the actual description, uh, you, you're very careful of your opponent's counter-attacking threat. We've gone on fluid as well in terms of our team shape. I feel like they work together better as a team. You can definitely play unstructured as well if you wanted to. This is all about preferences. If you're unsure, just stick to the usual, which is flexible. Uh, there's no harm. Uh, when you do go on fluid or structured, you are messing about with the tactics a bit. But if you stick to flexible, there's, you know, there's never really any harm. It's just all about opinions. Uh, but I reckon you could get away with being a bit fluid so your teammates are helping each other a bit more. Uh, and making sure there's no exposed areas and covering for each other and whatnot. Uh, team instructions are very simple, just play a more direct passing and of course use an offside trap as well and uh, that kind of just helps us keep everything in line because obviously when you play on control or attack your line naturally 
uh, defensive line naturally pushes up so you just want to play an offside trap to make sure no one gets in behind you've also got a sweeper keeper in uh, uh, Kepa here he's not naturally a sweeper keeper but we do need him uh, as one because we're playing an offside trap of course he's very comfortable with it though he's not at his best playing that role but he, he can do it so we're going to need him to do it uh, and of course if we weren't playing this type of tactic we'd definitely play him as a goalkeeper but we just need him as is now uh, so yeah uh, the general way that we're trying to play is we want direct dribbling players we want players who cross often we want crosses from deep we want players who shoot a lot uh, and just to keep that type of football in mind, uh, that's what we've tried to create here as much as possible, also keeping our players comfortable. So we'll start off with uh, the defence. We've got a ball-playing defender in Laporte. San Jose is also actually a natural ball-playing defender, but you can't have two of those. It's too damaging. Uh, Laporte is comfortable on his left, San Jose on, his, on the right here. And actually suggest if you start to have a tiny bit of trouble with the tactic you should be playing the ball playing defender alongside the anchor man or the defensive midfielder here so that he finds him easily over here it's a bit of a risk playing it over here and of course uh, if he's playing it forward to Benat he might be losing the ball a bit too often for your liking um, but yeah I mean uh, you also have to it's just, we're just trying to play them in their preferences so as it says here San Jose wants to play on the right Laporte is left footed as well so it's a bit of a problem to play him on the right and that's just kind of the way things work in football I suppose we're playing a full back on support to complement the inside forward but more importantly we want those crosses from deep so he's the only one in the squad that currently crosses from deep uh, so we're gonna have to rely on him a little bit we've also got a full back on attack to overlap the winger in Aki Williams uh, I'd love to play him on attack but this formation or this tactic requires having overlapping runs as well as direct runs too. Uh, so the direct runs are these ones here, inside forward at, on attack with the fullback on support. The fullback's never going to overlap the inside forward, so that's a direct partnership. Whereas here, this is an overlapping partnership where the fullback will go beyond the winger at times. Also got another direct one, which is uh, Garcia, who's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Aduriz is the direct partnership and uh, Garcia is just supporting him and that's kind of it. Uh, but yeah, this tactic requires to have both direct and uh, overlapping partnerships and so we've gone with this type of thing. At the same time, playing Williams on attack as a winger forces him to cross from the byline, which is what we're trying to avoid because we want crosses from deep. And I don't even recommend, if you want, to uh, have Inaki Williams put the uh, player instruction as cross from deep. See if it works for you. If you feel like it's not doing too much for you as a team, uh, then just take it off. I'm starting as neutral just so you can watch the games and then see whether you need it. Uh, also, if you can also have the option of playing Oscar Di Marcos as crossing from deep, but he's overlapping, which means almost always he's going to cross from the byline. Even though the game didn't naturally select it, I feel like that's what just tends to happen because he's overlapping. He's going to be very attacking and so it won't work so much. I feel like the wing on support uh, playing that uh, cross from deep instruction might work as well. Uh, so that's kind of our backline as well. Uh, the wing backs on support definitely work better with inside forwards than full backs on support, but he'll still do a job. Uh, he'll also keep us more defensively sound, anyways. Uh, but yeah, if you play wing back on support, they don't have the instruction cross from deep. We've got an anchor man to just completely solidify our team and make sure that nothing goes wrong. He is comfortable with the role. He has a defensive midfielder. He can play as a deep line playmaker. He can also play as a carrilero, but I feel like he's best as an anchor man. It just makes the most of his mental attributes 16 anticipation composure his only real weakness is playing is his is his headers but with capable center backs behind him i think he'll be all right his positioning's incredible tackling all that sort of business if you play him as a ball winning midfielder he's very comfortable as well but we need someone to hold uh, and so i thought anchorman's his best role deep line playmaker is very decent too but there's a, a couple of things missing from it as well like marking tackling uh, anticipation and so on and so forth so really he can play a number of different roles but i'm going to use him as an anchorman just to hold our midfield as much as possible and at the same time he's very comfortable with it Binat's a bit uncomfortable with his role but he's capable of it uh, so it's just more of a you know we had to change his role to try and keep the balance of the squad uh, he wants to play as an advanced playmaker but it's not something we can do from central midfielder especially because we do have an attacking midfielder uh, deep line playmaker unfortunately holds too much for my liking as much as as good as he is in that role 
uh, even on support they still tend to hold the line a bit and we don't want that at all we want an actual central midfielder going up and down the pitch and uh, connecting things for our team so that's why we've gone with the roaming playmaker uh, he's lacking in pace and finishing uh, but he's very comfortable with that roaming playmaker role as you can see decent physicals decent mentals and uh, he can do the job quite comfortably and it's making the most out of his attributes as much as possible uh, but yeah, you can definitely go with other roles like the central midfielder, uh, central midfielder on support. But just bear in mind, uh, if we do that here, uh, he lacks in the marking department a little bit. Box to box midfielder is basically a roaming playmaker without the vision. So why miss out on the vision and just have a roaming playmaker? You know, it just makes sense. Um, so yeah, if, uh, we've also made some tactical tw uh, or player instruction tweaks here, which is we've made him tackle harder, mark tighter, so he's playing a little bit more like a ball winning midfielder. He's got the attributes for it at the same time, but we just need someone in midfield who's really uh, hunting the ball down, and so we've gone with that. And I think even bearing in mind that he can't really shoot, we should go with the instruction to shoot less often. He's got decent finishing, decent long shots as well, but you just want to try and make him avoid that a bit too much so that we can actually play directly, which is what we're doing anyways. Uh, Williams isn't as natural as ever as a winger, so that doesn't need too much instruction. Inside forward for Iker Munayin, uh, we've already talked about the partnerships out wide. Raul Garcia is actually most comfortable as a shadow striker and advanced playmaker. Shadow striker though is a type of role that you would normally use for overlapping. Uh, but of course there's a couple of issues like his acceleration, uh, he's a bit lacking there, his dribbling as well. I didn't really want to work on that and of course he's got other attributes that can really help him in that in, uh, that are not being used as a shadow striker. I felt like his best role is actually advanced playmaker, helps him use his vision, his passing, not really his best role but it is a very decent role for him uh, we avoid dribbling we avoid the physicals of it as well and advanced playmaker works so well with an adv advanced forward but unfortunately for us um uh, his he has a better role which is actually an attacking midfielder on support because when we play an advanced playmaker on support you can definitely give this a go by the way uh, but i feel like attacking midfielder on support brings in even better attributes like his teamwork, his positioning, his off the ball, that doesn't come in when you use advanced playmaker, anticipation decisions, all that sort of stuff, it comes in and makes more use of it and of course you need a little bit of work rate even though it sh doesn't show here uh, for an attacking midfielder. So if you feel like attacking midfielder is not working for you, definitely go for the advanced playmaker, That'll definitely, there's no issues with that. But the problem is if you are playing an attacking midfielder as an advanced playmaker, you need him on attack which brings in the dribbling and acceleration and pace uh, and so we, you know, we want to avoid the physical part of the game so attacking midfield on support is probably a best bet and that's what we've gone for now the reason like you mentioned is 36 years of age so of course his physicals are dropping heavily but arguably his best attributes uh, or his best role is advanced forwards finishing of 16 off the ball composure anticipation in case no one's realized the darker blue is actually more important than the gray in terms of the attributes so as much as acceleration is needed for advanced forward uh, it's actually these roles uh, or these attributes that make the most sense he also likes to try to beat the offside traps so it didn't make sense to use him in any type of support role uh, if we play him as a target man on attack which is definitely a role he can do uh, he's got some decent attributes uh, it's something that you can consider but considering a target man doesn't like to dribble i don't want to really use it uh, complete forward you can probably go for it as well but you're just adding in attributes that aren't his best and so can, all things considered advanced forward seem to make the most sense and it's what we've gone for also he scores an incredible amount of goals he's a very good finisher so why not use the role that will bring that out the best so that's kind of it in terms of the tactics and the team of course uh, the players so we can go through things very generally we already talked about the weaknesses and strengths uh, your staff definitely needs some work particularly your coaching staff is a bit of a worry the head of youth development doesn't even have good judgment of ability or potential which is something that's so key in his role so it is an area of concern uh, but generally looking just at here you can tell you need improvements in your staff uh, training, you know, everyone has their preferences during pre-season. I just set it on high intensity, keep it as balanced and match tactics. And then during the season, just keep it on average and then match preparation is whatever my scouts tell me. Uh, schedule, you've got a decent amount of friendlies as well as the Europa League, so you can keep it as is. Uh, but of course, you can pretty much just delete it all and do something that I like to do, which is have three home games and three games away on tour. Uh, but that's up to you, you know, going on tour in China and all that sort of business that modern football does. Competition expectations, qualify for Europa League. And the Europa League itself reached the semi-finals. So you definitely have to do well in the third qualifying round here. Spanish Cup reached quarterfinal, which you should be able to do, especially because you enter in the fourth round. Scouting. 
been completely revamped this season but yeah, give yourself a decent budget pretty sure you guys have noticed the actual transfer bu is, budget is very decent as well but it's set at the highest so not too much wage budget rule uh, room if you ask me i like to set it in the middle leaning towards transfer budget so if you you should more likely have 13.5 million to spend but of course it's up to everyone uh, how they do it but 22 is very decent money 22 million uh, but yeah, senior packages, you should definitely be having world and, uh, well, world for both your senior and youth packages because you're supposed to be a top team in the division. Uh, and so you can definitely have the money for that and invest it in that sense. Uh, of course, you only have 354 players, 354 players available to you, even without actually, you know, adding any conditions to your squad. So you just have to keep that in mind. It's kind of nice at the same time having such a small pool because that means you've already scouted everyone that you could possibly scout that will come to you. So just give you just to give you an idea of what type of players you can actually invest in. The best in terms of value is uh, Stefan Ruffier, who's just a goalkeeper who, who you'd say is a good goalkeeper for most uh, first division sides. So it's just a bit of a worry, the type of uh, players that you can invest in. Uh, so more likely than not, when it comes to Atletico Bilbao, you can only bring in youngsters with potential and rely, of course, on regens as well. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, I think that's kind of it in terms of scouting transfers. You do have someone coming in here, a right back. So maybe just keep that in mind when we were talking about the depth in the right back. You've already got someone coming in here. Uh, he joins you next year, basically. So that's... Uh, that's a decent transfer as well by the looks of it. I, or if you ask me, when it comes to the scouting, you're probably more likely than not going to have to rely on players whose contracts are finishing uh, and probably overage players, in truth, who are happy to return to Spain and join Atletico Bilbao. But of course, the better you do, the wider your scouting range should be. Uh, or more players will become available to you because if you take off this interested in it rises to a large amount um, but at the same time of course it hasn't actually made the adjustment which is you need players from players out of scouting range does that help no that hasn't helped all right you have to somehow find the team the condition which is that they have to be basket players i think you'll find it in general uh days and nation based in we don't want based language no nation of birth spain maybe if you go with spain that might help you but you do have to keep an eye out on who you can who you can buy i want to see if you take off the interested in transfer and let's say make an offer yeah okay so it shows up for you so at least if you do it this way you can kind of know who is and who isn't but if we there must be a, a condition that you can find because I feel like there are basket players who are who who just aren't interested in playing Atletico Bilbao because they don't have Champions League football, that type of thing. So I want to try and find place of birth. What if I do that? No, am I spelling that wrong? Maybe I'm spelling that wrong. Um, region of birth. No, not even. I can't do. Where was I? Region, second nationality, secondary position, squad number, world reputation, no. Transfer. Alright, by the looks of it, it's going to be nearly impossible for you to do anything, so it's probably best to say on realistic transfers, and that's it. Um, but yeah, very tough pool to work with. We already mentioned transfers, we talked about the club history. The board, of course, uh, you know, they're allowing you to scout any of the players within this continent. So just keep in mind when you set the packages on world, it's a bit of a risk because, of course, uh, you'd be spending a lot of the scouting budget. Whereas if you just set, set it on Europe, you'll be all right. Um, yeah, within this continent. Okay, so we already talked about the budget as well. Your finances are quite decent by the looks of it, 41 million. You don't really spend too much, especially because you know, you're know you so focused on the players that you bring in. Projections don't read too well though, so you do have to be careful. And it probably has something to do with a bit of this debt though, but uh, it's not heavy debt to be fair, you're just paying 200K. It's probably because you need to get into Champions League football and that should help. Under 19s, a couple of players to look out for, not huge talents, but you know if you develop them, they can be from this guy to about this player here uh players that you should maybe keep an eye on but yeah i feel like that's kind of covered everything important we've given you the tactics we've given you the team guide and instructions uh, so go ahead give it a try and let us know in the comment section 
uh, whether it worked for you or not. But yeah, I think that's all for today's episode. So if you didn't enjoy it, then of course, please hit the like button and subscribe for more Daily Football Manager 2018 content. And of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you all very, very much for watching.